<laughs> you made that noise, didn't you? You said, I, I didn't know. You should have. I should have. You should have. <laughs> Why'd you spend money? <laughs> <You can> just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my, my free time, I do like to impersonate foghorns, yes. <laughs> when no one's home, I sit in the back room. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> so we're going squatching. We're going squatching, bitches. Welcome back. I sounded angry, but I'm not. Thank you for joining us. I'm Josh. <laughs> he did it again. Oh, I'm Lennon always. <laughs> and this is Don't Touch My Sasquatch. <laughs> I almost skipped over my co-host. Uh, we explore controversial topics with energy and a good laugh. We're two guys that have a love and passion for these topics. Things that you may have heard of, but may not know the full story of yet. We're here to tell you those stories, share our opinions, and let you come to your own conclusions. We will do the research, me and Lennon, that is, so you don't have to. Keep your minds open to the possibilities that things may not always be as they appear. Might not always be. Something just isn't right. Patreon listeners will get that. Patreon, shout out. There There is an area of the Atlantic Ocean that has a history... Of mysterious occurrences and disappearances, these incidences have been happening from the days of Columbus to the mysterious disappearance of five bombers in 1945. There's also an account from an experienced pilot that flew through this area and had an unusual, frightening, and time-defying flight. What causes all these strange happenings? Is it something that's explainable? Or are some unnatural forces at work? It's the capuchin monkeys. I like it. Well, <laughs> sit back, relax, and put your tinfoil hats on as we dive into the, myster- the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> nice. I thought you were going to go like this for a second. I did circle as a joke. <laughs> I did circle. <laughs> So be moved to try you. Glitched out there. Bermuda Triangle. It happens in the Matrix, yes. Uh, now tell me, when was the first time you ever heard about the Bermuda Triangle? Uh, I was probably back in middle school, watching like History Channel or Discovery Channel, and they do those. Great, same, me too. Yeah? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it was Ancient Aliens. No, it was definitely one of those for me. Uh, one of those. Then like, again, that's History Channel, so that still fits. Yeah. But, yeah. A lot of interesting cases. Yes. I think the three we chose are the most fascinating. Yeah. Um, f- the one, one of the ones I'm going to talk about mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. was actually the first, because I remember I watched a, like, it was one of those hour-long TV docs on, on it, and it was about the one story I'm going to talk about. So that was my first introduction to the Bermuda Triangle. Gotcha. Um, I think mine was the same story. Oh, that I saw, yeah, yeah, because the one I did, I didn't see till later on, mm. which really intrigued me. That mm-hmm. was cool. Made me want to go flying over the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, well, what about a little history? A little Lennon. Well. oh, I'm sorry, Lennon. I'm gonna throw it to you. How about that? All right, let's do it. Uh, not much history on it though. <laughs> no, there's. I mean, unfortunately, but let's just get into it. Crystal clear blue waters and endless sunshine are the unmistakable signs of a tropical destination of calm and serenity. Not quite. One would think, no. Yeah. I I mean, no. Those fucking currents get some brutal weight. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But deep beneath the waves of the Atlantic might lurk a threat that has been, nope, that has for centuries, that has for centuries swallowed up those who pass through her waves. Mermaids. Maybe. A place where time and physics betray, betray our instruments and leave us to barely escape with our lives, or worse, never to be seen again. Bum, bum, bum. The place known as the Bermuda Triangle spans around 500,000 square miles of ocean. It's a good amount. It's, that's a good amount. 500,000 square miles of mystery and terror. In perspective, the United Kingdom is around 94,000 square miles. So you could fit damn near 
Five of them sons of bitches. Yeah, he got, I didn't know he gave the mouth. The mouth, the mouth, the mouth. <laughs> he died. So he died. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the, he died. <laughs> I didn't die. I'm still alive. <laughs> so the triangle's not a small patch of the ocean. <laughs> he died. <laughs> he died. <laughs> Woo. The triangle is made up of three points connected by Miami, Puerto Rico, and of course, Switzerland. When venturing, into the <laughs> when venturing into these mysterious waters, be aware... It's obviously Bermuda. When, <laughs> when venturing into these mysterious waters, be aware that your normal navigational instrumentation may fail you. And from there, you will be navigating on pure human instinct and senses alone. Learn the stars. Make sure you get your sextant. <laughs> that was before a video. Now everyone can see that. Yes. <laughs> sextant. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Sounding rod. Nope. Mm. Image not found. <laughs> <clears throat> you made me face. <laughs> you made me face? You may be faced oh. with dangers. Uh, like, I said or, but I meant like. You may be faced with dangers like sea monsters, mm-hmm. freak nature events, and mm-hmm. even possibly USOs. Nope. Ooh. But how do we know of these strange occurrences? It came in hot on that one. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> well, the first the first indicator is the massive amounts of disappearances and wrecks that occur in these waters, mm-hmm. both nautical and aerial. Stories of these mysterious waters date back even to one famous explorer named Magellan. Magellan. I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's a very good reference. <laughs> God. <laughs> Proud of me. Because like, well, you, 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 history is not your thing. It isn't, but I know people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know people. I know people. <laughs> I've met people before. I, I see people daily. <laughs> uh, yeah, Christopher Columbus. So the story goes, as told by his logbooks, that on October 8th of 1492, he done sailed the adoption. His compass was going apeshit. And he even wrote that he saw a flaming fireball crash into the sea. Just a meteor, right? That's what people say. But? No but. Oh, that's it? Yeah. That, that, that was his account. Well, that, Christopher, uh, you suck. Christopher, you should have seen more shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. Instead of killing people, you should have fucking opened your eyes yeah. to the possibility. That this world has to offer. Oh, you know what I'm disappointed. We about? did the research. He didn't have to. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Yeah. So, no Lennon's history corner jingle. No, there's not much. All right. Sorry. I was so excited. My loins were tinkling. Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> not tinkling. <laughs> tickling. Either way, it's tingling. Like Still tingling. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. And there's a grunge. Well, grunge. Grunch? Grunch. 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 Like Grinch, but with a U. Yes. Grunch. Like Devil. brunch, but with a G. Yes. Devil's balls. Like school bus, but spelled grunch. <laughs> <laughs> like asshole, except spelled G-R-U-N-C-H. Yeah. And everybody's like, what the fuck's a grunch? Well, listen to Patreon. Sign up for our Patreon. You get weekly, bi-weekly bonus shows. <laughs> <laughs> You get weekly access to it, but hey, hey. Bi- bi-weekly bonus shows. <laughs> <laughs> you only access to it is half the time. <laughs> <laughs> but over the centuries, these strange happenings didn't stop, and a pattern started to form as well as a reputation of the so-called Devil's Triangle. Yes. Devil's Triangle. Yes. So let's dive into a strange disappearance of a naval ship what? Why was it called the Devil's Triangle? I don't know. They call it the Bermuda Triangle, the Devil's Triangle, the Bahaman Asshole. That's not true. Satan's anus. Satan's <laughs> anus. That's a hot sauce. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, did I really Satan. miss something? No. no, okay. no, no, no. I didn't know if you were like, <laughs> fuck, I told you to research it. <laughs> no, no. All right. You were the producer on this episode, sir. Hmm. <laughs> Let's dive into a strange disappearance of a naval ship that still has never been found to this day. It's time for our second favorite reoccurring segment. Get your ticket and board your favorite ocean liner. It's shit facts about ship facts. (laughs) 
new. <laughs> you gotta you gotta warn me when you do something new. I'm gonna have to make a video for that now. <laughs> it's new. Figured I'd surprise you. Oh, I liked it. Cool. That Thanks. was nice. I went on and bought it and did it. <laughs> yeah. You just that's what I do. I just buy shit and go. I don't even ask for your approval anymore. Well, new segment. Haha. <laughs> Reoccurring segment. Okay. New segue. <laughs> Should have done this a while ago. Yeah. A lot of shit facts about ships. Shit facts about ship facts. Well, cue the dramatic music and intimidating percussion and horn section. Imagine, if you will, a massive ship cutting through the waves. Mm -hmm. The year is 1918, and as we slowly pan up from the waves, we see many Navy men aboard attending their various tasks. Indisting chatter and yelling can be heard from commanding officers. I see everything as a movie. (laughs) You do, actually, and that's okay. (laughs) The ship is the USS Cyclops, and she's the biggest ship in the Navy. Sailing the waters for eight years now, she's grizzled, worn in, and working like a fucking champ. (laughs) The Cyclops is a collier, a ship that carries coal, and during her career at this time, that's what she was doing, and she was doing it well by transporting coal all across the globe. Who's coal, and why is he traveling all over the world? Ashley Cole, he's he's a soccer player. (laughs) You're tired. I thought it was Nat King Cole. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is. He's a singer, dude. Oh. He fucking salutes. <laughs> he's a pirate. <laughs> Never heard of Nat King Cole. Oh, no. my God. Is he an old? Well, I was born in 1920, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Cyclops is a collier. I said that. You did. So it's launched on May 7th of 1910. The beast of a workhorse came in with a length of 542 feet. Me too. <laughs> not a, not a, not a. But hell broke loose in 1914. As conflict, <laughs> began, as conflict began, the world had just entered its first world war. Oh, well, fuck. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings? <laughs> Why are you greeting them? <laughs> Greetings to the first world war. In 1917, when the U.S. joined, the Cyclops was redirected as she could be extremely beneficial to the war effort by transporting troops and supplies. Mm-hmm. And on mm-hmm. one such trip in March of 1918, she would disappear without a trace. Something just wasn't right. Something not right. The fateful trip began as a mission to deliver manganese ore, an important ingredient in the steel making process, to Baltimore from Brazil. Ooh, Brazil. So in March of 1918, mm-hmm. loaded up with her cargo, she departed Brazil for Barbados to refuel and then begin the nine day voyage to Baltimore. Always a nine day voyage. Oh, Mary wow. Celeste. Nine, by the way, in your research, did you see Mary Celeste in there? Yes, I did. And I was, I like, was like, no, no, it wasn't near that. <laughs> it didn't disappear at all We there. fucking did the research. <laughs> they should have. Right. So, yes. Yeah, Sorry was. for interrupting. I just thought it's that was okay. No, I did see that as well. Um, weather fair, all well. This would be the last message ever received from the ship. Weather fair, all well. Mm-hmm. What year was this? 1918. Thank you. Uh, this... This was after they had left. You got a little flaclump there, didn't you? Got you? Oh, talk this amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. <laughs> Get shit done. <laughs> <sighs> this was on her tr- after she left Barbados for gotcha. Baltimore. Gotcha. The ship and her crew of 306 souls never reached their destination, nor would they ever be heard from again. Mm. What happened to the Cyclops and her crew remains a mystery to this day. But somewhere in the triangle, she went down, and it may have been under mysterious circumstances. How do they know it was in the triangle? Uh, because their course took them right through. Right, but how how do they know it wasn't beyond the triangle? Stop adding logic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was just questions I had. Like, maybe yeah. they had people out post there. Right. Anyway, (laughs) Uh, a few days, nope, a few years, nope, a few years later, Santa Fe Magazine, I don't know what the name, what the fuck, published a feature on it and had this to say, quote, usually a wooden bucket or a cork life preserver identified as belonging to the lost ship is picked up after a week, but not so with the Cyclops. She just disappeared as though some gigantic monster of the sea had grabbed her Men and all, and sent her into the depths of the ocean. Yeah, that, all the of it. That. I'm grabbing the people. And the suddenness of her destruction is amplified by the absence of any wireless calls for help being picked up by any ship along the route. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Bermuda Triangle it was. 
Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> you made that noise, didn't you? You said, I, I didn't know. Yeah, you should have. I should have. You should have. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you spend money? <laughs> <You can> just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my my free time, I do like to impersonate foghorns. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> when no one's home, I sit in the back room. Ha! <laughs> 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 That's why your nickname is. I say, I say, foghorn leg hole. <laughs> Ooh. Since this time, <laughs> many theories have been pushed on what caused her and her crew's untimely demise. I think she sank. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> Here I was thinking something else. She flew away. <laughs> like, like Peter Pan's hey, I was going to say, show. wasn't it Peter Pan? <laughs> Peter Pan. Uh, <laughs> Pee-pee. Old Pete, wow. as I call him. Old <laughs> Petey. <laughs> Petey Pan. <laughs> One theory suggests that the Germans actually saw her as a prime target to eliminate to help cripple the opposition. I did. <gasps> I had a big <laughs> breath on that. One. <laughs> oh my god! And as I've discussed before, we know the dangers of a wolf pack of German U-boats. A wolf pack. <laughs> <laughs> but did the Germans sink the Cyclops? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You do what the if research. They, <laughs> I can't do everything for you. <laughs> But if the ship was struck by an attack, any attack, again, there would be evidence in the water. Um, debris. Yep. Debris, oil spills. Something. St- something. Yeah. Bodies, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, some even went to blame the captain of the ship. His name was Captain George W. Wardley. Ah, oh, this is George W. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I knew he was old. No wonder. <laughs> uh, now, Captain Wardley was accused by some of his crew a few months prior to the incident in question to be a drunk and they saw him to be unfit to navigate the ship. Don't there, mind me over here. <laughs> I was, I my jaw was, was hurting. It's very distracting. Was, you know, I love snakes so much, I want to dislocate my jaw. Just, <laughs> ah. uh, but could there have been a mutiny aboard the ship? Maybe. Always. Maybe. Maybe oh. they set him off in u boat or uh, Not U-boats, but... <laughs> <lifeboat>. <laughs> 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 Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. Um... But with these experienced crew members, Mm -hmm. they should have been able to navigate the waters and take the ship to land or or at least to Florida Mm -hmm. if they did not possess the capability of a trip to Baltimore. So that kind of goes out of that theory in my head, too. That didn't make sense. That theory kind of goes out the window in my head, too, is what I was trying to say. Yeah. So what really became of the Cyclops? I don't know. Odysseus killed them. Accepted knowledge does not have an answer, but I do. Are we ready for this? I'm listening. A joint task force was created between the Germans and the Kraken, an alliance, if you will, <laughs> and their plan, an oh-so-devious one, saw the ship dragged down to the far depths of the Triangle, where the Kraken delivered it to its masters, the aquatic species of greys known as the aquatic species of greys. Oh! <laughs> I don't know why I turned into a ghost. Uh, joking. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the knee thing again. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, oh, did you hear that? That was a pop in my knee. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, just got to pop it back in. Um, Nothing to see here. Well, all insensitive jokes. Huh? Well, all insensitive jokes aside. 306 people lost their lives and their families still do not have answers more than 100 years on. We hope that someday they get closure and answers to their family members' tragic disappearance. Most of them are passed away. Already. But they still have family members. Fuck those people. <laughs> Kidding. So, Cyclops, uh, gone without a trace on the agua. Ooh. What about a flying case? Are you done with yours? I'm done with mine. Sorry. What about a flying case? Let's sure. talk about Bruce Gernon. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, the way your voice <laughs> the way your voice came out and like the way you moved your mouth, it just looked like you went, Gnn. <laughs> Gernon. <laughs> it looked like it did do it. I'm a ventriloquist now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Fucking great. Would you shut up and tell your story now? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Ooh, I need a drink. Get it. <sighs> that was a deep breath. My bad. Well, on December 4th, 1970, Bruce Gernon piloted a Beechcraft Bonanza single-engine aircraft along with his two passengers, his father and his business partner. 
<laughs> Sorry. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> the forecast for that day was clear with no storms, which made what Bruce and his passengers experience that much more unexpected. Just something wasn't Slight right. Slight chance of a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's a little bit of weather. No, no, it's 30, clear. 30% chance. <laughs> We know how accurate weathermen are. Yeah. <clears throat> and weather women. Mm-hmm. Bruce Almighty was an extremely experienced pilot by his early 20s <laughs> and had already logged more than 600 flight hours. Wait, 600 flight Great. hours. Great. Great. Do you know what that means? He had 600 flight hours. It does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> the flight was scheduled to go from Andros Island in the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. To the Florida coast. A trip that would normally take an hour and a half. Not nine days. <laughs> <laughs> it would usually take an hour and a half to make. And he had never encountered any issues before this day. Oh. But on this day, the trip was a little different than usual. Okay. After taking off and climbing to about a thousand feet, Bruce and his passengers saw a dark cloud ahead of them that seemed to grow bigger and bigger every minute. Bruce flew through the cloud and out the other side. No issue. Great. Uh, Wonderful. Easy. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they reached 11,500 feet, though. Slightly higher. There was another, more massive dark cloud. Oh. Uh-huh. And Bruce thought to himself, shit. Something <laughs> just ain't right. <laughs> Something ain't right. And once again, Bruce had no choice but to fly through as he did the previous one. And shit his pants. <laughs> well, I would too. <laughs> but when... They went into the cloud. This time, everything was pitch black, mm-hmm. and there was no sunlight penetrating the cloud whatsoever. Damn. Yes, sir. As they flew through the second cloud, they suddenly saw flashes of white light, which would appear and vanish quickly like lightning, but this was no lightning. They were The light was brighter than lightning and would illuminate the space surrounding the plane. Bruce kept flying through the seemingly endless cloud for another 30 minutes. At this time, the cloud was cylindrical. Sorry, the cloud was cylindrical, oh. and they were flying through the center of it. Damn, it was about a mile wide. Okay, they said. He finally saw a small light in the distance, which seemed to d- to be the exit, <laughs> and he flew faster towards the exit. <laughs> <laughs> what well, golly, you Betty Sue? <laughs> <laughs> As they flew towards the light, they witnessed a strange things happening around them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Finish your sentence, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic pause didn't work there. The walls of the cloud began to narrow, spinning like a vortex and closing in on the plane. Oh, shit. The plane's compass started spinning counterclockwise mm. all by itself. Okay. Because, you know, he wasn't sitting here doing this. Well, usually it goes clockwise. I'm just saying, all by itself. He does, you go fuck yourself, all right? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> the electric instruments began to malfunction, and he no longer had any control of his aircraft. It seemed to be moving with the help of an unnatural force through space. I know, like an engine. The fi- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was good. That was a really good one. <laughs> oh, classic. The final nerve-wracking 20 seconds of this experience finally ended and the plane emerged from the dark cloud. Okay. As they exited the cloud, the plane fell completely weightless for a couple of seconds before returning to normal, now surrounded by a grayish haze. Mm. Bruce immediately contacted ground control to get his location. Ground control couldn't give him his location, though, because he didn't show up on the fucking radar. Uh Uh-oh. Exactly. (laughs) Bruce soon realized that he had already reached Miami. A trip that normally takes an hour and a half took only 45 minutes. Time dilation event, huh? 47 minutes, but they didn't want to be technical, I guess. Sure. A Beechcraft Bonanza aircraft can cruise at a max speed of 180 miles per hour, and there is no explanation as to how they made the trip in only 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. The distance between Andros Island and Miami is 250 miles. Aircraft going about 180 miles per hour? You do the math. Uh, I don't. About 
hour and 32 minutes. Ah, I'm not good know. at math. I don't know if that's what it was. I was just making sure that. <laughs> <laughs> We're here for the hard-hitting truth here, folks. I think uh, it was an hour and 24 minutes, but. 24 and a half. I like it. You got yourself a goddamn deal. <laughs> <laughs> After safely landing, Bruce started to try uh, figuring out what the fuck happened. Uh, he checked the remaining fuel of the plane, um, and he realized that he hadn't gone through as much fuel as he should have gone for the trip of that distance. Okay. All indications pointed to Bruce somehow skipping half of the distance of the trip he was supposed to travel, have supposed to travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, he consulted with professors and uh, experts, but none had any answers for the or any letter. None had any answers or ideas of what happened in that day in December, uh-huh. and uh, he came up with his own fucking theory. Yeah, I want to hear it. Well, he, may, he wrote a couple of books, and uh, he could read one of those. Okay, no, cool. his own theory. I'll do it. I guess. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't read the books obviously because sure. I didn't find this out till like two days ago. I'm not that fast of a reader. Okay. Uh, basically, his theory was theory was a electronic, uh, like time dilation type of thing. Like sure, that he went through space and time. Yeah, quicker. The vortex. It was pretty that. weird. Um, yeah, half the time, mm-hmm. you have a spinning cloud you're traveling through that's like pushing you along. Sure, sounds like it to me from I what think- I've experienced. Yep, <laughs> I think that's the problem there, Jim. <laughs> See, the, the telling sign was the counterclockwise rotation of the compass. Absolutely. That's how I knew. With the counterclockwise rotation of the uh, clouds. Hey, that's exactly, exactly. what done and then did it, it. You know, while it was squeezing it out like a pooper. <laughs> sign sealed delivered. <laughs> you know, it's going down. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, cut. Well, it's a clear day again. Look at that. We're somehow... 45 minutes farther. <laughs> well, that was the, the tale of good old Bruce Gernon. 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 G-E-R-N-O-N. Uh, so I was wrong. I did know that one, but I didn't know the full details, but I didn't know the time dilation type event. Yeah. Pretty fun to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> no, you, <laughs> no, it's... There's the chopper. Get to the chopper! I don't know why I made him sound like... Come on, <laughs> do it now! There we go. Well, sticking with the aerial. Yeah. <laughs> Moving ahead to the next world war. Sad sense to say out loud, but we're sticking with the air. Um, the conflict in Europe officially ended on May 8th of 1945. What conflict? What? The world war. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> May, 8th. May 8th of 1945, and on September 2nd of 1945, with Japan's surrender. The world could finally breathe again and lick its wounds. Many had to pick up the pieces and mourn lost loved ones and homes, while countries had to rebuild or, for some, repay the debt that is owed to them. Boy, you're really making this an uplifting story. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and at the end, the world had seen two global scale mass casualty wars in less than half a century. And who knew when the next would appear? And then I, st- I wrote, where am I going with this? Because I all of a sudden started writing a bunch of history stuff. <laughs> so I wrote that to come back to it in transition. But uh, here's my transition. Um, so on December 5th of 1945. Transition! Um, December 5th of 1945, yes, after sir. official war had ended in both theaters, another mysterious disappearance would take place, this time involving a squadron of five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers. This training exercise that they partaked in, partook, partook, partook in, partook in, <laughs> partook in, partaked in, partaketh in. Ah, one of the two. Well, either way, this whole stuff was called uh, known as Flight 19. Yeah. On this day, shortly after two o'clock, a routine training flight was dispatched. The five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers took off from U.S. Naval Air Station in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Leading the exercise was Pacific Theater veteran Lieutenant Charles C. Taylor. Yes. Yes. The bombers were operated by three men in each craft, aside from one plane, which only had two men in it. 
The majority of these men had logged many, many hours in the air. Like yeah. one of the things I read said around 300 or so each. Wow. Nothing compared, compared to old Brucey there. <laughs> old Brucey. 600 by the age of early 20s. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Their three hour training would take them on a triangular path from Fort Lauderdale mm-hmm. east to my favorite place, Hens and Chicken Shoals. <laughs> So That's the good. name. So it's called Hens, Hens and Chicken Souls. Yeah, uh, to conduct bombing runs, and then they would change direction to head north mm-hmm. to Grand Bahama Island, and then return by changing direction to southwest to return to Fort Lauderdale to gotcha. the base. Can we go on vacation to Chicken Hall, bam, bam. Chicken Island, Chicken Hall, <laughs> Chicken Hall? <laughs> That's KFC. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it, it's well, the first so KFC, guys. <laughs> guys, why do you have your tents here? I mean, we're fucking camping out. <laughs> we're camping at Chicken Hall, bitches. <laughs> uh, yeah, chicken, uh, hens and chicken shoals. <laughs> hens and chicken shoals. <laughs> hens and chicken shoals. Um, so after their successful bombing runs, a la the uh, Death Star trench run. <laughs> um, after the successful bombing runs around 2.30 in the afternoon, the squad made the pre-planned turn north. And things began to get hairy. Oh, we, we got a little rich, huh? <laughs> Lieutenant Taylor became convinced that his compass was malfunctioning and that he had been flying in the wrong direction. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Danger, Lieutenant Taylor. Danger. <laughs> well, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Diane. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> Happy New Year's, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was convinced they were flying in the wrong direction. Mm. Now, he's a seasoned veteran pilot. He's leading this mission. Yeah. The sudden squall that hit them didn't help their situation in the slightest. No. All of a sudden, just as... Here we get a food of him. Um, the storm came out of nowhere. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What's his name? Brian Hergner? Bruce Gernon. That's the one. That's the one. <clears throat> That's Bruce the one. Gernon, please. As as with him. Who? Bruce Gernon. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Gernon. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, they had a sudden squall come out, out of nowhere and hit them. Gotcha. Um, didn't help their situation. No, they went back in time. Yeah. Well, well, maybe. He can be heard on the radio transmission having the following conversation with a pilot from one of the other planes. Something just ain't right, guys. Something ain't right. Quote, you turned into an old man. Something ain't right. Oh, <laughs> shunny. <laughs> Quote, yeah. both my compasses are out, and I'm trying to find Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I am over land, but it's broken. I am sure I'm in the Keys, but I don't know how far down, and I don't know how to get to Fort Lauderdale. Now, meanwhile, they're supposed to be east off of the coast of Florida is where they're supposed to be. So a call was made to the Naval Air Station by one of the pilots that were in the squad that was lost. Yes, sir. Taylor had been convinced that he was suddenly hundreds of miles off course, and he insisted... That they fly east because he believed he was in the Keys, and mm-hmm. that would be west. Yes, I think Keys are either way. Yeah, west. Yes. So he believed he was somehow went hundreds of miles out of nowhere in the wrong direction, mm-hmm. and their compasses weren't working. Uh, pilots who were lost over sea mm-hmm. were instructed. I'm sorry, pilots who were lost over the Atlantic. Gotcha. Were instructed. To head west towards the setting sun, you point your nose towards the setting sun, mm-hmm. and land would appear at some point. That's how you get home if you're lost. Gotcha. Makes sense. It does. But Taylor insisted that they were in the Keys, and east would bring them home. And as lead, they flew east under his command. I have something on Taylor. Maybe you do too. Okay. The crew... Wait, did you want to share that now? I'm going to wait till you're done, okay. just in case. The crew inexplicably ignored suggestions by the... Naval Air Station, Mm -hmm. uh, like switching on the IFF transmitter to triangulate position. Yeah, you're not going to want to turn that one on, apparently. I shouldn't be rude like that. (laughs) Nah, Nah, I got this, Doc. Uh, So they didn't do that. And one pilot can be heard saying, quote, damn it, if we just fly east. West. Damn it, if if we could just fly west, we would get home. Head west, damn it. After flying east for a while to no avail, uh, Taylor was talked into 
turning around and flying back west. But around 6 o'clock at night, he changed his mind again, and they once again traveled, or turned around, started going east again. Because that's a smart thing to do. Yes. <clears throat> so um, why did all five, like, just at this point, I would have been like, you know what, I'm going to save my own fucking ass. So there is there's, why is... there's conflicting reports. Um, uh-huh. Some reports say that one of them branched off on their own. Okay. And said, fuck you, fuck this, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And... Because they'd be running low on fuel at this point. Back, forth, back, forth. Getting there. Yeah, yeah. This, they're getting close here. Um, I think they said, I think the one report I said read, I think the one report I read said, said read. that <laughs> they were they would run out of fuel by 2,100 hours. It's a lot of fuel time then. Yeah. But um, still. And by this point, I, I don't know, I think it, it's at 6 p.m., whatever that military time transition to. So they were getting close to running out of fuel. That's 1,800 hours. Um, that's what it was then. That's that's nuts. Think about being in an airplane for twenty one hours. One that doesn't have a bathroom and you're just fucking sitting there like this. Sir. Twenty one hours? Isn't that what you said? Twenty one hours? Twenty one hundred hours. Oh, I'm so sorry. No. I, it, I didn't like the time of day. I thought you said tw- that's why I said it was a lot of fuel. Like that yeah. twenty one <laughs> hours. Holy shit. No. They would run out of fuel by twenty one hundred hours. Got Which, it. But, I just misinterpreted that. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Shit happens. You get that on big jobs. So nine o'clock. Sure, 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 sure. If that's what it translates to, it does. Let's go. Uh, you do the math. I'm not doing it. I can't do everything. <laughs> um. So at six six o'clock, he changed his mind and yes, turned around again and went east. Saying, "Quote," which could be all of this is heard over the transmissions uh, from the radio. Mm-hmm. Radio transmissions back at the bases and stuff. Yes, sir. Um, he said, we didn't go far enough east. We may as well just turn around and go east again. He was convinced all through this that he was still way farther west than he should have been. Somehow, inexplicably, thought he was hundreds of miles away suddenly in the wrong direction and then kept continuing to fly in the wrong direction. And as the lead, they followed him. The right. other four? Right. <clears throat> so, um, transmissions from Flight 19 began to grow fainter and fainter. Evidence of the gap between them, this was evidence of the gap between them growing. So, they obviously were going farther out to deep sea. Taylor was heard prepping his men for a potential crash, saying, quote, All planes close up tight. We'll have to ditch unless landfall. When the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we'll all go down together. That was the last thing that anyone ever heard from them. Wow, what a great leader. Shortly before the, shortly before this time yeah. that this last transmission was heard, mm-hmm. the military scrambled two PBM Mariner, Mariner, not Mariner, <laughs> Mariner flying boats to begin a search mission. Mm-hmm. But just as mysteriously, shortly after takeoff, one of the crafts vanished, crafts, crafts, vanished from radar. Really? Disappeared, yeah. The search plane disappeared. These flying boats, though, were notorious for being dangerous as they were nicknamed flying gas tanks. Oh, good times. For their ability to catch fire. Uh, so it is, do. it is believed and backed up by witnesses that the flying boat had exploded in air shortly after takeoff. Uh, the witness, a nearby merchant ship, claimed to have seen a fireball in the sky and saw oil and debris in the water. So, that one just blew up. Right. That's the crew of, I don't remember, 13 on that. Sounds familiar. Uh, died or yeah. disappeared, one of the two. Um, I mean, if you had a uh, airplane blow up and you had a report of it and you have a missing fucking plane yes. and there's debris all over the place, how is it missing if you could just go find the debris? Well, it went missing off of radar for a minute. or oh. well, Until they got clarification. They were oh, like, bad. where the fuck did it go? And then they found out Son that that merch. Bitch. We lost another one! <laughs> Scramble another! <laughs> until it was kind of confirmed by the witness. that. Uh, Sorry, guys. They saw shit. They saw shit. So shit. We done saw shit. There it is. I, I wrote notes. The flying boat and its 13, 13 crewmen were never recovered or found. Incredible. The search began the next day when the Navy sent out over 300 boats. That's a lot of fucking and boats. And aircraft. And aircraft. <laughs> okay. Looking for the lost planes. 
over a five-day period, 300,000 square miles were searched with no debris <laughs> with no debris mm-hmm. or bodies ever being found. They were simply 100% just gone. To this day, never been located. Ever. Not so, for lack of trying, too. No. So a, they, so they thought a while back. I'll get to that in a second. Mm-hmm. Okay. A Navy board of investigation had no answers to the explanation either of the disappearance and ruled it to be, quote unquote, causes and reasons unknown. That's basically, about they're, right, basically they're like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Questions remained like, mm-hmm. Why did the squad refuse to turn on potentially life-saving instruments to locate them? Because mm-hmm. they did. There was like more. There was a bunch of other ones that they were like told to do. Yeah. Aircraft jargon. So right, I didn't that's, Yeah. I won't know what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> the general. Cons- the general. The general consensus. <sighs> wow. You all right, buddy? The general consensus is that the squad ran out of fuel and went down as a group off the east coast of Florida and ejected from their planes to be left floating, stranded at the sea, and the ocean eventually took them. Flight ten, flight 19 has still never been found to this day. Now, a while back, there was big news headline articles. They were like, Flight 19 found, we found them, right. whatever. Um, freaky, though. Not freaky. Uh, very coincidental. They found, in the Bermuda Triangle, five of the same type of planes, in almost the formation... Or what they were in a grouping, right, at the bottom of the fucking ocean, but it wasn't flight nineteen. It was five other of the same planes. Did it have a flight number on it? Did they know like it was a flight no, seventy two? They, they did the serial number. They checked the serial numbers right, right. on the plane. Because apparently they're still good, I guess, underwater. But either way, serial it was confirmed. It was just, I mean, it was confirmed that it wasn't flight nineteen. So it still has never been located. So what fucking flight was that? Right. I don't know. It's a time dimension thing where Flight 19 went into a different reality. And Flight 73 came, came in ours. ours. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. So the thing I heard about Captain Thomas, that's the right name? Taylor. Lieutenant Taylor. Yep. Yeah. The thing I heard about Lieutenant Taylor <laughs> yep. was he was known for getting lost a lot. Okay. So it doesn't surprise me that he fucking... I also... But I still question the other four members... If I was in that flight pattern, and I think I would have enough sense to do this, I would fucking, I'm going to go towards the way we're supposed to go, like that we're taught to go. Right. So you have a lot of different things at work here. Um, let me continue that thought in a second. I want to go back to what you just said. Um, okay. This is for me. <laughs> no. Um, there was one report that I had read that someone claimed that the day before the training, or, or the hour, an hour or two before the training, he like went into his. Oh, got yep. He went into like whoever higher ups, and he's like, yep. I, "I'm not fit to lead this mission today, or I can't do this training today. I can't lead it, or something, something like that." Hung but, over. Was that what it was? Yes. Okay. There was the reports that he was hung over and a poor navigator. That was the other part. Gotcha. So not poor navigator. Sorry, constantly got lost. Right. So there's a lot of things at work in this story. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got first off the malfunctioning compass. Yes. Um, Seems to be a I don't go-to. Know You've got a storm that they flew into mm-hmm. right with the compass issues. Now, just as Bruce... Gurnan. <laughs> uh, suddenly was in a different location. Yeah. Or he... Maybe he didn't, like, time dilate. Maybe he teleported. Maybe. But my point Still, is, is that... My, Bruce went... Towards the direction he was going, these right. guys or the captain thought he went the fucking opposite way. Right. So that's my point is that somehow maybe sit, you had, if you can just like expand your mind for a minute and be like, hey, maybe the shit is is a little wild. Maybe he actually, maybe they actually did get drifted off in the keys. He grew up in Miami. Mm-hmm. He knew the area. Right. He knows what it looks like. Um, maybe they were actually that far away. And then maybe their compasses still betrayed them the whole way, and they just got lost and zigzagged away through all land. Right. Or you still have the fact that maybe they most likely didn't do that, and they were just compasses were fi- failing them, and their instruments were failing them. And then you've got the poor navigation and coordinate navigation. 
That's what you said earlier. <laughs> the poor navigation and leadership pulling in the wrong direction. Um, but the compass failure is enough to be like, this mm-hmm. is strange. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, never been found. There was also a report I read that said that he relieved leadership mid midway through this whole challenge um, and gave command over to... Huh? You said midway through this challenge. In my head, I'm thinking like <laughs> they purposely fucked up their compass <laughs> to see if they can. Like, Here's your challenge, buddy. You fucking failed. <laughs> you failed You could have gone one of four directions, <laughs> and the one direction is the obvious answer. <laughs> and you went the fifth way. No, it's, I mean, I knew. What you, I was just, yeah. Um, what was this? What was this? Oh, supposedly relieved command over to another pilot, gotcha. but. There was not really confirmation on that. Um, but the what I had told was the general consensus of the accepted story, which I even got from, like, what is it? What is it? The mm, One of the... History.com? Hit, no, well, yes, but um, it was, like, Naval History Institution or something like that. I don't know. It was all the, mil- the military records gotcha. of what actually transpired. So, yeah, never been well, found. Um, lots of strange <coughs> things in that one. Did you read uh, nine... Eight, nine hours of just... Light log? Light log? No, I did not. Come on now. Come on now! <laughs> if I can do that on uh, the moon episode... I did that on the Robertson panel. I'm fucking with it. You did. You're right. Well, you've been redeemed. Thank you. <laughs> Let's look at some explanations that possibly could be. Some more out there. Okay. Some more logical. USOs. We're going to kind of go... In that order? Uh, illogical to logical? Yes. We're going to start with UFOs or USOs. Hey, hey now, that should be the last one. Uh, well, on, on full honesty, I should probably put wormholes as the first one. Should <gasps> I? Wormholes. Anyways, UFO. Okay. Uh, with the accounts of lights seen in the sky and with some being accompanied by strange noises, is it possible that the cause could be UFOs? Could it be? Or USOs? There's a theory that there's an alien base underneath the water of the Bermuda Triangle. Uh-huh. Let's face it, whenever there's an unexplained disappearance, the easiest thing to do would be to use the aliens as a scapegoat. Yeah. Uh, But if this is the case, then why the waters of that specific area? Right. It's just that area. Yeah, just like literally a triangle. Why those? Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be a big fucking base if there's a base. Yeah. I'd like Um, to see it. Uh, Ah. Do you, though? I have an answer. There you go. But I don't know if you're going to touch on it. Touch me. No, thank you. Uh, are you going to talk about what I suggested originally? Yes. Sweet. Which again, okay. For the, I'm, I didn't go from illogical to logical. Okay. I went from a group of illogical to a group of logical. <laughs> There's no order to these. Liar. All right. <laughs> Another one is hole in the planet's electromagnetic forces. Oh. Yeah. With a large number of accounts of compasses going haywire. Ooh. Uh, when flying or sailing over this specific triangular area, yep. much like that of the Gobi Desert, which in the Gobi Desert, if you didn't know, your compass spins as well. Mm-hmm. Um, could there be a hole in our planet's mag- electromagnetic field in this area for some reason? Gobi Desert and the Bermuda Triangle. Uh-huh. A malfunction, a malfunctioning of compasses can lead to s- lead sailors to be disoriented and drift significantly off course mm-hmm. and ultimately get lost. Um, I didn't dive deep into that because okay. I, I didn't want to I mean, do I'm fucking sa- science. I'm happy with it. You know, you I ain't going to do fucking science know. shit. I do anatomy, and that's about it. <laughs> All right, let's see here. If I do this for this, and, nope. Nope. this amount of gamma rays should successfully turn me into the Hulk. <laughs> and we have our new co-host, Orion. Yes. <laughs> uh, the next one is a wormhole. Oh. A wormhole. I enjoy that. This is like a shortcut through time that could, in theory, lead to time traveling. There are reports of from pilots and captains, kind of <laughs> like Bruce Gordon, Gordon, Bruce Gordon, of them experiencing electronic fog. Okay. Uh, followed by them experiencing t- lapse in time. Blech. What is electronic fog? It's fog. Yes. That is electronic. <laughs> great. Great. <laughs> You know, so, sometimes you know, I, I wonder why I even speak. <laughs> <laughs> if, while you're doing the next house, uh, 
uh, wiring it up, make sure, sure just, there's some fog. There's the fog. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Breathe deep. <laughs> and there goes my nose. <laughs> now, I'm assuming, you know, what Bruce Gernon flew into, that big dark cloud. I'm assuming that's what they're thinking of as electronic fog. Okay. You fly in, there's a bunch of electronic fog. whatever. <laughs> no, electric, like electrically charged. You fly through it for some reason, transports you to a different time. Okay. Or okay. forward in time. I don't know okay. if it goes back. Now, I can't remember. There was a story, um, and I don't know if it has to do with the Bermuda Triangle, of a pilot flying, mm -hmm. I think, to the future, oh. seeing a bunch of planes. This is during one of the wars. Okay. A bunch of planes at this base that he didn't recognize because there were different uniforms, there was different whatever. Uh -huh. And then flew back. Back to our time somehow, and then this years later, years later, visit that base and was like, "Wait a minute, this is all, yeah, how it looked." That sounds familiar. I can't remember what it was. I wish can't I could place remember. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do the research. So you don't have to. Hopefully, it's not the Bermuda Triangle. Otherwise, we failed on that one because I would have loved that one. <laughs> Are the disappearances of these ships or aircrafts and aircrafts caused <laughs> because they went into a wormhole and traveled to another time? Or is there a more reasonable explanation, like the currents of the Gulf Stream? Now, that'll hit on. You see, before I added my next note, that was a transition into my other one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just remember that little line okay. for later. For okay. the, the next one is Atlantis. Yeah, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is said that the Bermuda Triangle is the location of the city of Atlantis after being submerged by into the ocean. Mm hmm if this is true, who knows what sort of technology um, is inter interfering with the ships and airplanes that pass by. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are also stories that the souls of Atlantis attacks, attack ships and airplanes to avenge their ruins. Fucking awesome. Um, Atlantis fascinates me. Talk about it then. Um, I mean, not full thing. We'll do an episode on no, it. But. Uh, for you listeners, that was the uh, suggestion for this week. We were mm -hmm. like... Let's do. I was like, let's do Bermuda Triangle and Atlantis, and mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, there's a lot on both. Yeah. So you get an Atlantis episode someday, but Atlantis is cool as fuck. Maybe next week. We haven't talked about it yet, but we have. Uh, we'll see. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time we stopped in the middle and did an hour and a half of marketing? <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was simply uh, incredible. <laughs> it was incredible. Oh, <laughs> it was shit. <laughs> the good old like, days. We are like, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, hold on. <laughs> the good old days where we recorded half the episode, went to lunch, came back, recorded the second half. Total of three hours of recording for a 45-minute episode. <laughs> Idiots. Yeah. So there's Atlantis. We'll okay. talk about that in our day. Fascinating. Love Atlantis. Weather good, conditions. Good are they? Well, maybe. I mean, Namor's all right, but... He's an X-Man. Just think... kidding. He, sometimes he is. He's sometimes Fantastic Four X-Men. Um, he's a... Sometimes he's even an Avenger. And sometimes he is he's an, an Illuminati. Uh, Illuminati, yes, but he is a mutant. Yes. And God damn, does he have the hots for Sue Storm. Oh, tell me about it. And this... Ad break is brought to you by Fantastic Four. Our love of comics. <laughs> Weather conditions is the next one. Okay. There are reports of unexpected storms hitting out of the blue in the triangle when no such weather was forecasted for that day, from water spouts to violent thunderstorms and apparently electronic fog. Part of the Gulf Stream runs along the triangle and can lead to high waves that could easily capsize ships. There's no warning of these waves, and they could be they could uh, they could be hundreds ah. of feet high. Damn. Uh, my note says they could be hindered by feet high. <laughs> oh, yeah. High they feet. <laughs> my foot is high. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they could be hundreds of feet. Hundreds of feet high. <laughs> If an airplane is flying too close to the water, uh -huh. it could easily be swallowed up by one of these waves. Okay. Does the Bermuda Triangle have its own biosphere? Is this sudden weather that has somehow come through a wormhole? Has this sudden weather that has hum somehow come through 
come through a wormhole from another time or dimension? Hummus. That line was hard <laughs> for me to deliver. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys got the point. I'm Pretty not sure you said again. hummus yeah, at some point. <laughs> I'll, I'll hummus your ass. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, another one. Okay. Uh, this one reminds me of you, actually. Oh, sweet. Methane gas. Ah, <laughs> God, me. You got me good. <laughs> you. Oh, I'll fucking cut your electricity. <laughs> no, you won't. I'm in an apartment right now. Yeah, I'll turn the building off. <laughs> <laughs> turn the building off. <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay maybe that thread will have a little weight when i have my own house uh soon. i can't wait uh, yeah well you're gonna be wiring it so yeah a sizable amount of methane gas does exist in parts of the ocean floor yeah the ocean um, farts <laughs> it sure does it is deadly <laughs> they're sbds <laughs> um, if these pockets of methane gases are released is it not is it it is possible that it could sink ships like those hips, or bring down airplanes in just seconds. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 what? The earth farts and planes <laughs> just drop out of the sky. Oh. <laughs> those oh! electronic, that electronic fog will get you. <laughs> no, these are the methane farts. Yeah, but it's an electronic fog fart. <laughs> <laughs> A huge eruption of methane bubbles okay. could push the water away from ships. Or reduce water density, causing the ship to shrink. That was such a good sound effect, bro. <laughs> God damn. Thanks, dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great sound effect. <sighs> also, if methane gas uh-huh. goes rises into the air, it is possible that airplanes' engines... Sorry. It's possible that an airplane's engine... Okay could ignite the gases which could cause the engine and thus air explain, airplane to explode. Shit. So maybe the the, um, the the rescue flight, the boat one. PBM. Yeah. Maybe that one had a methane Fair gas enough. pocket that fucking hit it and made it explode. It was very flammable. They it did was. call it the flying gas tank. <clears throat> now, my question is about what about the ships that are found with supplies and no crew floating? Yes. There's a um, vast amount of them. I don't know the explanation for that one. I don't I either. Nothing. Um, it's not just Bermuda Triangle related. The, uh, the ghost uh, ships of missing crews, mm-hmm. Mary Celeste being one of them, mm-hmm. um, found all over the fucking yes. world is weird. Maybe we'll do a episode on that someday. We'll do another one. There's many. Minus many. the Mary Celeste. We're not doing that again. Well, we can always cover another ghost ship. There's enough There's of them. Shit facts about shit facts. We love it. Can you push the horn again? I just want to hear the horn. The horn? So, when I first heard that, I thought it was fucking bagpipes. I was like, I'm waiting for the... (laughs) (laughs) Like, what is going on? Yeah. Uh, Last explanation, Uh possible explanation, I should say. I have is... uh, The one I have is the most... Credible? Credible, yeah. Gotcha. Human error. Oh. I mean, human error... Accounts for an untold amount of tragic accidents, uh, both in the water, in the air, on land, everywhere. Underground. Everywhere. Confusion and disorientation could lead to a pilot or captain getting lost. Uh-huh. And getting lost could have deadly consequences like running out of fuel uh-huh. or supplies uh-huh. or never finding land. Yeah. Or constantly going east, west, east, west, east, west, and yeah, if, if, he, if they traveled <clears throat> two hours east and then two hours west, they ended up the same spot they were, and then two hours east again <laughs> and the same spot they were. You hey, know, at some you know, point. <laughs> at some point. How about, if something's not working, maybe tweak something and change it and try again. <laughs> no, no, that's insanity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's the explanations. Okay. Now, Lennon. Yes. Please, I would love to hear what you think the your not what do you think, but what do you think the I said think a lot right there. I think 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 <laughs> think 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 <laughs> glitching. Um, what your thoughts are okay. on what could be causing all these instances uh-huh. to happen in the triangle. Well, I'll tell you which one I'd like it to be. I okay, go ahead. I would like it to be Atlantis. Oh, of course you would. It'd yeah. be fucking cool. It's obviously not. That'll be another episode you can produce. I, I think Atlantis is cool. Um, it is fascinating. Yeah, no, very much so. Um, as always, this is like this one. There's always so much 
mystery. Yes, sir. And like, it's it's what fascinates us because those things that we, you and I subscribe to mentally, like, mm-hmm. could these wormholes really be appearing out of nowhere? And if so, why is it just this area? And why, right. you know? Um, I honestly, I don't know. Uh, I think it's a mix of human error, and I definitely think there's something else going on. Gotcha. Because the fact that it's localized to that small 500,000 square miles. That is weird, yeah. Um, but the fact that it is localized there. Um, Five Great Britons. Yeah, you got your kingdoms. Either way. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> uh, just fuck those other countries. How many countries are in this country? Fuck you ever that seen country. Ted Lasso? No, I haven't. Um, I don't have Apple TV. It's okay. Um, Thank you. It's okay. <laughs> it's not going to change. <laughs> Got it. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so, you, yeah. Yeah. So, in the amounts of disappearances and strange occurrences. That's it. He went dark again. Lighten up. My screen froze. Time out. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, I, what are you thinking? I am going to start with what I would love it to be. I would love it to be wormholes. That'd be the coolest fucking thing be to be cool. able to travel through time. I, of course, if it's only one direction, and you get, that would suck because like, I don't yeah, want to just the like ban, the band sucks exactly. I, <laughs> I got you. Don't worry. No, um, you could also only travel a half hour <laughs> extra, right? But if somehow you Save travel, getting to work 30, you know. 30 fucking years, that would, that suck. would suck. That would suck. Who knows? Maybe all of a sudden, Flight Nineteen just what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, where the fuck are we? <laughs> I don't know. What the hell is that? <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. I said that expecting the, my brain to autocomplete with a joke. <laughs> there was no joke, so it just came out so stupid. <laughs> what? Guys, where the fuck are we? <laughs> There's no joke there. Nothing completed in my head. So sorry. That's listeners. what I'm here for. I yeah. tried to complete it. Well, I appreciate that. But then I realized my joke was more of a visual joke and not as much of a listening <laughs> joke. So sorry, listeners. Yeah. And again, I'm talking into a camera. Video guy apologizes All to right. the listeners. <laughs> Audio guy keeps it in mind. <laughs> well, I should. Well, sit Anyways. back, relax. <laughs> my actual thought. Okay. Is, yeah. A mixture of two, uh, well, three of them. Weather okay. events, okay. human error, and methane gas. I think it's just a mixture of all of Sure. Um, <clears throat> sorry, not to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, I just remember something I want to talk about with that. Please do. Um, the methane gas thing. Yes, um, sir. I think it's been tested on many different documentaries about yeah. this. Sure as fucking shit does it bring a ship down. It does. And one solid piece. So, yeah, I think I'm going to call that a natural occurrence and mm-hmm. weather event natural occurrence, that too. So I, I definitely think that too. Um, but, yeah. Methane yeah. gas thing is wild. For example, Bruce Gernon's trip, mm-hmm. I think, was more of a weather event. I don't like. I can't explain why he went. For, like, I don't even know if there's a, a log back in 1970 that could tell you. Yeah, this guy traveled from here to here in this amount of time. Right. So, you're going off of someone's personal account. Sure. Did he lose track of time? Like, whatever. Maybe his but, watch stopped halfway through the flight. <laughs> it glitched out, and it was like, all right, I'm right. back. There was, obviously, his compass but, wasn't working, so who knows? And the compass thing, uh, I think it was methane gas. There's something, I, oh, shit. I don't know what it was. It was something affects a compass that could actually yeah. make it do that. Isn't it the it was. magnetic thing you said? Yeah, magnetic it might have been hole. That. I think there's something. I thought it was something to do with methane gas, and I forgot to research that. So gotcha. I'm sorry about that. You're, you're fine. Um, I wasn't apologizing to you. I don't okay. give a shit about you. Okay, you, I'm sorry. It's our users. I thought you did the Our research, users. So we didn't have to. Our listeners. <laughs> our users. <laughs> <laughs> Put that shit in your veins, guys. What the fuck? <laughs> Put our podcast in your veins. <laughs> you should, because you're a good giggle. So, methane gas, human air, yep. weather condition. I think it's a combination of those. You know, the only way for us to really know to go out there? Uh huh. But do you really want to get lost to see? I don't give a fuck. I hate open water. Really? I do. So it terrifies me, but I'm obsessed with it. I want to go on a cruise so bad, okay. but I'm completely petrified to just see nothing but water. I want to go really? overseas to Europe and all that so bad, but I'm petrified of flying over, over open water. I'll fly to Mexico. I'll yeah. fly to California. Uh-huh. All over the place if there's land under me, for the really? most part. Mm-hmm. Wow. Didn't I, mean, I did not know that. You didn't? No. Heights and flying over open water and snakes. 
<laughs> Those tricky bastards. <laughs> yeah. They're always up to something. <laughs> I just don't trust those eyes. <laughs> uh, but that's my theory. Sure. And I'm sticking to it. All right. I'm sticking to mine as well. So you don't the think... the same as yours. <laughs> you don't think any, like, any any mystical or, or out-of-this-world <sighs> theories? Without sounding like a fucking crackpot. You can... Yeah. <clears throat> You know, I, and and plus it's hard for me to be like, yeah, I definitely think it's the fucking aliens because they have this weapon that can do this. Yeah. They have this weapon, you know. I. It's just aliens get blamed for so fucking much. Right. It's just like that's a go-to. Maybe there is an underwater base there. There could be. And maybe it's like a fucking defense system. Maybe. And maybe it's called Atlantis. Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. Well, uh, last thing. Okay. Uh, Lennon? Yes, that's me. Hit him with the outro. Ah, got me. I almost pushed the button. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, guys. We're done today. I've spoken enough. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hit him with the outro. Boom. Uh, oh. Well, ladies, gentlemen, and squatches. A little squatch. Uh, thank you all so oh, much. We never even said that. Little Squatch is making his uh, video appearance right now. Again? Well, video appearance. Oh, He's I'm never so been sorry. on video. Sorry for the confusion. God. I'm talking. He'll be over my left hand shoulder anytime I'm full screen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have enough fucking space uh, behind me to do him. <laughs> I wish it would. <laughs> it's so funny. If like halfway through us recording this, it like fell over and you didn't realize. And then like you're editing the video and you just cut it back at one point and it just tipped over. No, I see him smiling, that goofy little smile. Gotcha. Well, with his water bottle up his ass. Thank you all so much for listening to yeah. this week's episode. Love you. If you would like to reach out to us and let us know your thoughts or opinions, you can do so by finding us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on our YouTube channel. The links are in the show notes below. I thought you were trying to punk me out or no, something. Down below. <laughs> no, that was a Patreon <laughs> episode. <laughs> uh, if you enjoy what we do here, don't touch my Sasquatch, and would like to support us, join our Patreon to get bi-weekly bonus shows, discounts on merch, exclusive Patreon content, and lots more to come. You can hit the subscribe button for auto downloads to listen first thing every Monday morning. Do it now. Do it. And drop us a five-star rating and a review. We would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And this helps us to grow and bring you more content for you to enjoy. Now we hit the bot. And Just for, kidding. Go ahead. And for the YouTube listeners, make YouTubers. sure you hit the subscribe button. Yep. And the little bell thing. Click the bell. That's right. And you'll get us every Monday as well. Every Now Monday. hit the button. I know now you hit the button. I can Push hit the, the button. button. <laughs> no! Oh, that, that was actually perfect timing. You hit the horn, and the, the camera goes, No! <laughs> got, <laughs> got hit by the ship. <laughs> oh. I just love the horn. I think we're going to put the horn on a different one because the horn's the best. Oh, Lord. Great. Well, join us next Monday for our next incredible episode. You may write us, rate us, review us, but remember to always stay curious, be vigilant, and don't touch my Sasquatch. You can. He's lost his sea. Peace. See ya. Poor bastard. He's gone. <laughs>
the Cyclops. The Cyclops. <laughs> the Cyclops. <laughs> He finally. So, are the disappearances of these ships and aircrafts cause? Uh, Maybe I should have read this part because what the fuck does this say? (laughs) I'm doing like the fade out on the video. You're always doing (laughs) something. (laughs) I gotta have some kind of fade out. Video complete. Done. 